okay? Well, first of all, thank you to Inbal, Inbal and yourself to make this time available for chatting with me and I uh, deeply apologize. Um, I missed our first Skype session, I think a couple of weeks ago, and it was my fault. So, sorry about that. All is well. Um, shall we start? <laughs> Whenever you're ready. Um, I I um, seem to know intellectually the, the 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 story about thoughts and how they um, how they keep coming in and out um, and uh, um, I do get pulled into the story because you, even though it, it may be depressing but it's it's I play a part so I'm I'm busy playing a part so. When I when I do realize that I am I'm, I've gone into thoughts, um, I pull back, and then I remain in the space, um, not too long because there is a sense of forgetting it, um, and it, it and this is what I what I've been doing throughout the day, even even in my daily activity. Um, um, and I've, um, there are some changes has which has occurred within me for as far as peacefulness and things, but there is still um, frustration um, uh, that the thoughts, similar thoughts, do come in repetitively. Um, so it's it's uh, it, it, it's it, I guess due to the habit, uh, it's it's hard not to judge myself. Uh, and you know, judge about judge others. Um, One second, few things then, okay. Everything I've heard is describing what you're not being pulled into the thoughts, forgetting. This is of the mind, yet. Who you truly are is not the mind, is not the thought, is not the one is pulled into the thoughts either. Who you are is changeless awareness. It is absolutely still. It has no relationship with thoughts, going out, going in, identifying with the thoughts, or disidentifying with the thoughts. It never has any relating to it. Okay? It is the, in the background, and when there is no thought, it remains. That's the first forgetfulness, that the mind thinks that it is you. When in fact you doesn't think. And the mind has to undo itself, or undo its spell from this uh, illusion from the dream. So it's undoing itself when it puts the attention inward back to who you truly are. Yes? Yes. It might appear that you're doing this work yet you are not the one that is moving so you're not doing anything. It's the mind undoing itself. With judgment, all the mind knows is judging. Every thought is a form of judgment. So the mind having an idea not to judge is a judgment into itself. And that's perpetuated and keeps it reacting to thoughts. It's a trick of the mind. Uh, you're saying the the mind plays trick saying don't judge that itself is also a trick I it, mean yeah it's a judgment because this idea once it adopts it every thought that appears that judges 
it judges it for judging. So it reacts to it. So it seems um, in our daily life, it, it, it only makes sense to just realize what's going on and, and, and basically that realization automatically puts an end to, to the circus which is going on in the head. And it seems that's all we can do, I mean, in the, in the daily life. It depends from which per perception it is spoken. From your, from the true being of who you are, nothing is happening. Mm. Nobody is doing anything. From the mind's per perception, it, iman it imagines there's a lot of thoughts going on, a lot of things happening. Yeah. And then it, it imagines that it is thinking these thoughts and it's doing it and it's experiencing different experiences. The mind, for the mind, is really key for it to wake up and undo itself and wake up to the dream it is dreaming in the mind itself. You just with the remembrance or with the unknowing that you are not the mind which thinks. Because if you can look at the mind as an entity that is not you, it's much easier to work with the mind. Mm. Yet when you look at the mind like it is you, then you are much more involved in it, react to it identify with it. You're entrapped in it instead of just watching it as an entity, not you. So it would be like watching two people fighting yet you're just sitting and watching it. You're not involved in it. You don't even care what really happens. It's their business. It has nothing to do with you. So are you suggesting to create some kind of a separation of, I guess, who our awareness, which, which is, you know, we cannot hold the awareness in my, I cannot hold the awareness in my hand, but whoever truly I am and the mind, I mean, are, is that, is that okay to do, to have that separation or is it then again a story, uh, you know? You cannot do it in the mind. when. Do you recognize that your that awareness, which is aware when there is no thought, aware of itself by itself? Yes, rarely, but yes. Okay. Okay. Then, even if you had this one recognition, then every thought that appears just recognize I'm not this thought. I'm not the one who is thinking. I'm not even the one who is undoing itself. I'm not this judgment. This is discrimination. This is one approach. I'm not saying one better than another. Yes. As we speak, I just share one approach yes. to discriminate, discern the mind, the thoughts. And then it's less personal, less personal, less identification as a me, as a separate entity. So the mind can be active discerning. There is no problem because who you are is inactive. And the mind is activity. So it has two modes. It can be active and it can be at rest. Yet these two modes are not you.
Oh, the 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 entity which which uh, discriminate discriminates and the the entity mine. I'm neither of them. That's right. In in Advaita Vedanta in the Viveka, Shankaracharya and different sages brought that in the mind there is the higher mind which is the buddhi and has a, the mm -hmm. cheat, the storage of all memory. Mm. And there's the lower mind, which is the ego and the manas, which is the deciding factor. So mm. when the mind discriminates, I'm not this thought. I'm not the mind with things. I'm not the judgment. Whatever, once the thought appears, the, the buddhi comes and discriminates it after, when it's active then it's the it's still the mind and you're neither the discriminative factor nor that which is being discriminated you're mm. neither mm. so it's the mind undoing itself it's the body undoing the lower mind and disappears mm. into you i see yes thank, thank you for that explanation because i i think i've heard you talk about that before um, so I, 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 I mean I guess I mostly stay in the mind level but there are times um, that 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 buddhi comes in and says wait a minute that's not who you are see you're like a, a hamster going in the circle I mean the difference between me and the hamster is that perhaps I know that I'm going in the circle and maybe hamster doesn't know that I don't know that for sure, but I realize that okay, the these thoughts are coming. So I guess that that's the buddhi, and then right at that moment there is a stoppage of activity. Therefore, activate or let the mind be activated to discriminate as much as possible when thoughts appear. Okay. So if you're quiet and thoughts appear and you can recognize or you're driving or you walking or the moment you're not so engaged and talking and you you observe the thoughts still it's in the mind now get the mind give it a job give it some work because otherwise it gets attached to thoughts and get lost in a dream yes So, I completely agree, I understand that. Um, so even the frustration which comes with the repetitiveness, that, that's where the frustration comes, because there is a sense that it's a similar thoughts keep on com coming, and yeah, there are, there are pauses. Um, but I, I think you're, you're suggesting that, in a way, it's a fight, I don't want to use that word, but it's a, it's a constant Let's fight. look at that for a moment. Okay. okay? When I hear there is a fight with similar thoughts, you have a belief, or the mind have a belief, not really you. Mm -hmm. The okay. mind has a belief that thoughts should not appear repetitively. And when they do the mind reacts to it because of that belief. Mm. Recognize that this idea has nothing to do with what the how the mind plays itself out. Mm. So instead of not wanting to these thoughts to be repeti repetitive, mm -hmm. just welcome all thoughts. Whether they're repetitive or not, it doesn't really matter. As they appear, Observe it and then discriminate. I'm not this. Okay. And then the mind reacts to it out of habit to repetitive. I'm not this reactivity. Dis Got it. Discriminate that too. Mm -hmm. Judgment. I'm not this judgment. Yet mm -hmm. don't plan the idea that the mind should not judge. Don't oh, okay. plan the idea that the mind should not be repetitive. Don't okay. plan the idea that the mind should not recollect ideas or habits. That's all its nature. That's what it does. Right. Yes, I, I think yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah. 
I, it's like I don't want it and, and that's the problem. When you don't want it, you sustain what you don't want because you resist it. You're reacting. The mind is reacting to it. It's not you. Now, what happens? I'm not this not wanting. I'm not this desire. I'm not this that argues. I'm not this that has a conflict with the thought. This is what they call neti neti. This tool, if one, if the mind is active, discriminate, it, it leads the mind to fully dissolve in, in who you truly are. This simple. Yes. Yeah, the mind is looking for so many acrobatics and, and complications, yet, no, it, it gotta be super simple. and usable for the mind itself to undo itself. Thank you. Um, and sometimes I just kind of go, go within, like uh, uh, Ramana Maharshi's, you know, like the, the source of this thoughts. So I just remain within in the daily daily life uh, even when I'm active I don't, and I'm just I bringing don't that understand. up I hope it's okay right. I don't understand um, um, my attention I, I, I would say my attention I bring it in of some, you know, of, of the source, and I try to remain there. Okay. The attention can be, in this case, let's say, either on thoughts for now, and or shift the attention on who you truly are, on the source, yes. which is pure awareness, pure consciousness. Okay? If the attention on that, then the, the experience is silence. That's right. The more you fix the attention on that, then all the rest happens by itself. Uh -huh. No need to, to have the mind even be active. Yet, if it appears, the habit is to fix the attention on that and then it pulls the mind out. Yes. Yes. Then yes. cut it by discriminating. I'm not this. Another way is I'm not this, I am pure consciousness. And you shift the attention beyond that thought of I am pure consciousness. I understand. So I think one another thing I want to bring it up and it's is the sense that my time is running out. Um, I've never had this kind of feeling and it's been with me for past six, seven years that um, even when my mother passed away, I was not able to cry because there is a sense that if I'm crying, who am I crying for? Because she's already gone. So, I, I guess mind is trying to find answers and, and I think nobody really can give me the answer, but I just wanted to bring that up. Perhaps there are some key points we can throw in there. Um, but I, so I, I have a sense that it's all going to end <laughs> from my limited self. Um, you know, in the past, I, I, how I was brought up and grew up and 
for past five, six, seven years, it's like I have, I've re, I felt like I've really actually arrived now, and you know, time is ending every moment. When thought appears, time begins. When thought disappears, time subsides. Yet the time, because thoughts appear and disappear very quickly and it turns to be a stream, there is the illusion of continuity of time. Yes. And what sustains it is the memory. Mm. Because then the mind says there is the past. And right away, the moment it says there is the past, it projects a future. Mm. Yet it is appearing in the consciousness of the beingness of who you are. So when you fix the attention on that which is timeless and formless, you realize you've never been in time. You've never been locked at time. Just the story of the mind is time. Yes. So as long as thoughts appear, time begins, just discriminate them. Yeah, nothing, 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 like you're saying. Yeah, I'm not this. Yeah. So not just, okay, it can be not this, not this, not this. It can be not real, not real, not real because the thoughts are not real or I'm not this thought and that will enable you to I am pure consciousness although this thought is just a pointer is not the experience of pure consciousness yeah? yes it appears within you which is pure consciousness And uh, as far as the function, you know, functionality in the world, um, I mean, it, I think that the the problem is there is there is this um, um, story that because of the thoughts in the past have also helped. In some situation in, in, in the life, um, so when it comes to you know functioning in the real world, uh, it it it's again it's it's uh, because I guess there is a sense to retain the identity. Um, it's hard to reject all the thoughts. <laughs> um, I'm just mentioning that, um, but I you know I understand your message um, because. The truth remains, uh, thoughts being unreal. So, where is the, is the real world exist independently from thoughts? Or when there is no thought, is there what I heard, no. real world? No, if there are no thoughts, there is no world. So, yeah. so and the thoughts are not real? So how can there be a real world? How, I'm sorry, how can there be? How can there be a real world yeah. when the world appearance is in the mind as thoughts yes. Yes. and the thoughts are not real? Then what's real is only your beingness. That's the only reality. So I, I do want to ask you something intellectual here. Um, I'll ask whatever and, you like. And, and just short, is that if there are instances in life where other people, you know, I mean, we let other people affect us, it's in some cases there are maybe abusive relationship or, or things are not going well. So, so intellectually, when I think about those things, and if I remain passive regarding the thoughts, then there is a sense that 
I'm, I'm letting myself be used by the situation. Okay, let's clarify some things. Can somebody else abuse me? As an example, I have I don't have that case. I have um, I just have, uh, for example, work situation where there is a sense there is a discrimination going on or whatever going on. So, to, in order to get out of the situation, you apply somewhere else for a job or something like that. So, so so in a situation like that, um, how do we discriminate? What's thoughts are you know okay. how to discriminate discriminate thoughts for example okay so let's say in the jaw what is the situation <laughs> the, no uh, so well the for example job where there is um, a lot of frustration as far as um, not getting progressed. Okay. So, what's causing you the frustration? The job or the idea that you're supposed to be more advanced or progressed when in reality or in life you're not? The idea. Okay. So, we come back to the thoughts. So, it's yes. not the job. It's based on past, yeah. who I am, you know, no. how I have been. No, what you thought you are. Yes. Except that in the dream you're thinking that you, you go through many experiences and it appears to be so real and then you wake up from the dream, you realize nothing of that happened. Yes. When, the more you wake up to who you truly are, you realize that what that what you think happened never happened. You dreamt it all. Treat the thoughts as like a dream. It liberates the mind. Nobody suffers because anything external. None. Even if somebody would come and cut somebody's arm, I go extreme because it's all body identification. Nobody suffers because of that. All they would have some sensation, which would be labeled as pain, and the suffering will begin is like, I shouldn't have lost my hand. Yes. I should have a, a hand. Now the mind start to suffer. Yes. So nobody is being abused externally. It's the mind abusing itself. Yet, then one asks, okay, and who am I in this? Am I the mind which thinks? Or am I that which never moves, ever free, changeless awareness? And then once they see, it's like, I'm not this mind. I'm not the one who thinks. I'm not the one who wants it to be different. I'm not the one who thinks it should, I should have an R. I'm not this. This is all imagination. It's the mind dreaming. Because the mind is a dream. And one has to recognize that whatever is happening in life, yes. what sometimes people call the real world, yeah. that's what they need. What, what did you say? I'm sorry. What, uh, what whatever one call it the real world? Whatever one experience in what the mind calls the real world, is that's what they need. 
means the whole world you experience through the five senses in the physical form. Yes. Right? So that's the world for you. That's what's happened in yes. life in that moment. Yes. So if the body has cancer, that's what it needs. If the body is ill, that's what it needs. If you lost all the money, that's what you need. If you gained everything you imagined, that's what you need. Because how do we know that's what's happening? The mind either can like it or dislike it. Either it wants more of it or it doesn't want it. It doesn't change what happens in fact. The reality. Yeah. yeah. The mind has to have the ability to scream to discriminate between opinion and facts. Fact right. is the reality and that's what I need. I need this fact. How do I know? It's happening. Mm. And it's already happened actually. It's always a moment later the mind perceives it. Right, right. So it's already over. Yes. As soon as it's over, the story begins. Yeah, and then if you don't let the, the mind perpetuate on that story yeah. and you cut it, then both are over. Yes. And you remain. But it does, but it does keep coming back. I mean, it, 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 it keeps coming back because it is charged with energy. Yeah. This is vasanas. Yeah. latent habits, tendencies that are charged energetically and they come up to free themselves that's why they come into the surface if you stop resisting it they can be freed completely it's kind of like vipassana where the body sensation I mean if I'm sensitive enough I should be able to feel the sensation in my body for every thoughts that may come and then if I remain with the, with the sensation let it go then thoughts will go away if the mind doesn't react yeah doesn't react the thing is that one second with the vipassana because you jump to the bodily sensation yeah come back and stay and notice that if there's no resistance to the thought then the thought is freed instantaneously. That's right. And you earlier in the beginning of our conversation, by the way, I'm having a little bit difficulty hearing you. I'm able to hear you, but not loud enough, if, if, if that can be solved. But in the beginning, you mentioned that when I said that there is a repetitiveness of, of thoughts coming, when I mentioned that, but you mentioned that, that I need to not have that image, that the thoughts should not come. So I need to have that awareness within me that anything can come, everything can come, however many times it wants to come, but just don't entertain it. it it's to welcome it, look forward to it, invite <laughs> it. Yes. <laughs> That is a that and it, that is kind of difficult to well welcome it. Um, if that means there is resistance, that means there is believing the thoughts to be real. If you yeah. recognize the thought is not real, why wouldn't you welcome it for all of it to come into the surface yeah. to free itself? It is trapped okay. in the memory because it is conditioned. To be believed as real. Right. I understand. Whatever the mind resists, it persists. Okay, I, I understand. 
understand. I have probably the last inquiry. Is that is about the practice. Um, I, I have told you what I've been doing because I, I what I've been doing is is in my daily life is to bring this awareness and nothing. nothing. This this is what I'm gonna start doing also. Nothing, nothing, because I wanna I wanna live my life like that. Uh, you know, uh, I know I wanted the wholesome action, so I'm I'm gonna continue doing that. Uh, but do you have any thoughts on um, practice? For for example, like vipassana type. I'm, I'm not suggesting vipassana practice itself, but any practice to that we should sit down, uh, in, you know, in a, in a, in a day every day, and and if we do, then what? What type of practice should we conduct to bring this more and more, this awareness? You cannot bring more and more this awareness. It's less and less thoughts and identifying with the thoughts. Then awareness shines through. It's the arrogance of the mind that it thinks it can bring more awareness because it wants to gain. And it exactly works in reverse. Okay. It's less identifying with the thoughts, seeing the thoughts not to be real. Therefore, if you look, if you want to give the mind a practice, or the mind wants to give itself a practice, every thought that appears, I'm not this thought. Okay. It requires super vigilance, super alert. Yes, absolutely. It would keep, if, if the mind is sincere, the mind will start to be quieter and quieter. It means you will speak less and less. And you definitely will keep away from speaking nonsense. Yes. So this is a practice in life. And then you can sit as much as as possible be still and then every thought that appears I'm not this I'm not this this work okay. is active it's not passive when the mind rests you cannot describe it neither passive nor active it is pure consciousness it's mm -hmm. indescribable yes and what you just mentioned has has already started happening where um, in some friend circles I don't speak and there is a discomfort within me that why am I not talking much because there is a less interest in chit chatting um, that, but my that's mind a good sign confused. that's always a good sign that you the mind lose interest in nonsense because it recognizes the essential being of who you are to return back to you to return back home you are home the mind w forgot home went out looking outside for home wandering all over the place yeah, dreaming and then it's across the way meeting other minds that are lost and they are both looking for home in the wrong direction both lost three four hundred people hundred minds it doesn't matter it's all the same mind yeah it's one mind yeah yes you can uh, Another practice you can use is um, if you can, don't ask questions, other people. Means if you're around somebody, don't ask them, can you bring me a glass of water? Can you please close the window? Can you bring me a pen? Mm -hmm. 
you keep quiet. If this thought appears, you take the action. And then you refrain from asking that keeps you practice. It's a practice for liberation in life. And then when people ask you a question, be precise in what you answer. Don't give them a totally different answer for a question they never asked. This is awareness, vigilance. This is when one is sincere. Change your eating habits. Change them. That affects the mind because there's a lot of stories around food and sleep. All body identification. It all depends how the mind is sincere. How serious, earnest the mind is. Okay. Challenge the mind to bring the reactivity into the surface. Welcome it to see the truth. To see what's left in storage that the mind might still believe it is true. So it can be seen in the light of awareness. I understand. And you're always welcome to schedule another call. If the mind is earnest and you and the mind start to put it into use. Any obstacles, questions, any doubts, bring them into the surface so it can be cleared so the mind can continue returning back to who you are. It's not you returning. You're not going through any process. It's the mind going through the process. You never move. That's the truth. Okay. I understand. I think I will let you go now. It's probably very late in Israel. <laughs> it's uh, 10 to 11. And that's just imaginary. Because the time is a superimposition of the mind. The clock time. So there's clock time and psychological time. Yeah. And time is actually an illusion. And what happens? The mind is slave of time. And mind is... And basically time is ignorance because it's a creation of the mind. So... Man is is slave of ignorance. Thank you for your work and and uh, exposing the truth. It's important. You are most welcome. All the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care.